At this point in time, John Wooden would have been 112 years old. Coach left us more than a dozen years ago, and yet, here we are. Let me ask you, why does a legend endure? Is it because coaches' principles are timeless? I actually think that's too simple an explanation. The humble leader, the one who sees realizing your self-potential as the real victory, the one that sees a team growing together as the greatest reward. These principles are not so timeless as they are timely. These are the principles the world needs now. And this is why the John Wooden Leadership Fellows are more important now than they ever have been. Whether it's taking care of sick cancer patients, providing them hope, prescribing new treatments, or improving access to care and addressing disparities, in my position, creating effective teams is what goes the longest way to tackling those goals. My goodness, Alan, you have taken on a lot. Professor, oncologist, department chair, global executive MBA student, how do you do it all? Well, to be honest, serving others, it's such a privilege and such an important part of what I aspire to do and to do so with equality. So I've been studying how to improve access for underserved populations who might be at risk for receiving inferior quality of care. Well, if they come to your hospital, I'm sure you treat them equally and fairly, right? Well, it's really not that simple, Al. Well, what typically happens is that a patient is diagnosed with cancer, and we found that if they're part of a lower income population, they're much more likely to experience delays. They may have to wait days or even weeks, often in anxiety-ridden state, to see an oncologist. And why is that? Things like housing, family, income, transportation, those can all affect access to care. And insurance can be problematic for patients as well. And this led to a patient program that we instituted I read up on this beforehand. Same day oncology visits after diagnosis. How did you pull that off? My motto has always been that if Amazon can do same day service, why can't we? A recent study showed that for every month cancer treatment is delayed, there's an associated 10% increase in mortality. With our same day access program, we reduced average wait times for an oncologist from 11 days to three, and found that lower income patients were more likely to use it as well. Based on our pilot data, other parts of the medical center are now rolling out same day access. I was also recently awarded a grant to develop an equity, diversity, and inclusion series to create more awareness for our providers and staff. Alan, just amazing. Access to healthcare has also been a passion of mine. So tell me about this new mentoring program you're doing. Yes, I enjoy introducing students from disadvantaged communities to careers in healthcare. Working with the UCI Early Academic Outreach Program, we've initiated a flow of students into our clinic so they can learn more about what we do as providers and to gain access to some of the college preparatory and mentorship opportunities that we provide to help them. You know, Alan, Coach would have been impressed. I know I am. It is people like you that make this fellowship the recognition and honor that it has become. Congratulations. I have a deep respect for what it means to be a coach. Every word you say as a coach matters. I understand you have a history of coaching. So did John Wooden. I think I heard that somewhere, yeah. I got into coaching primarily because I thought it was the most effective way for me to build and contribute to community. And my high school coach left a huge impression on me and sports played an enormous role in making me who I am today. And so I wanted to give back in that sense. So uh, how did you do then? Well, whenever people talk about success and they talk about Coach Wooden, they always talk about the pyramid of success. They talk about how he made players put their shoes and socks on the right way. Then they talk about the winning. So it's always process over results. So it really isn't all about winning then? It's about the players' goals coming first and then the coaches' goals. But it's definitely a lot more fun to be coaching and winning than coaching and losing. You can say that again. The third national championship in the last four years.
I chose to coach at a small private independent school that actually had never had a winning record before. My first season, we actually won 10 games. And then the second and third seasons, we won back-to-back -back league championships and actually eventually lost in the state semifinals in double overtime. But what I really treasure about those seasons are the times and the memories I made with the players themselves. But you've had to have goals, am I right? I always measured the success of my coaching endeavors by how many of my former players invited me to their weddings, their birthdays, their graduation events. And I always felt like if they weren't thinking of me in that way, then I was doing something wrong. And Sam, uh, for everybody watching this, uh, what's next? Division one coaching assignment, perhaps? Well, after school, I'm gonna go into consulting, which I view as a team sport. And in the meantime, I'm actually an Anderson career teams coach, but I do plan on returning to coaching at some point. It's the impact that a coach can make that draws me back. I look up to him. Our relationship has changed from him being my coach to him just being a mentor and a friend, someone I can call when I need help or advice. He attended my graduation. The best moments of high school, they're related to basketball and Coach Sam on and off the court. I don't know where I would be without him. Never underestimate what well, one or two words of encouragement to a player leaving the gym after a hard game or a tough practice can do to them for the rest of their lives. Sam, congratulations. Coach Wooden would be proud of you. Thank you. In the pandemic, I lost family members and friends in India because of the swiftness of the Delta variant. I had lived in Delhi, a very developed city. I was getting pictures of bodies being burned in the street because the crematoriums were full. I had to do something. Congratulations, Nick, on the John Wooden Fellowship. Thank you, Professor Oswald. So Nick, it sounds as if the pandemic presented some opportunities for you. Well, it's hard to think of something for me in that context, but yes. In 2020, I was working as a senior manager at the resort, and you can imagine what COVID can do to that kind of a business. I have to lay off hundreds of people. I felt depressed and really sick to my stomach. Every staff member was a family to me. They worked incredibly hard to take care of the guests and one another. Some of the kitchen staff and service staff, they don't have any of their skills, but many of them were dreamers and they really wanted to do something else in their life. So when I was let go, I started to reach out and checking on them. Um, and the next thing I know, I was helping them with interviews, resumes, and eventually I was able to find jobs for at least 15 people. I was struck by the sense of newfound purpose for me. Even I was looking for a job, but I was just happy and satisfied that I was able to find something for them. So I understand that the pandemic coincided with your time as a student here, putting yourself through school taking care of your family and supporting them while having been laid off. That must have been tough. I'm a very optimistic person. I was laid off for three months and it was amazing. I was able to spend some wonderful time with my wife and my daughters and I got time to reflect and got to do something about the toll COVID took in India. Well, it's the second largest country in the world. Uh, people living so close together. I know COVID must have hit it hard. In India, with Delta variant, there were massive loss of families, including my own. I couldn't travel, I felt helpless. I started reaching out to some of the students in UCLA for any support and donation, and everyone was very generous. I also learned that there were many Indians and communities in California who were desperate to support and help. So I reached out to them, and very quickly, I was able to collect around $15,000. That's a lot of money in Indian rupees. I worked with my friend who runs a small NGO in India, and we were able to transfer that money to his organization. This is why you're a wooden fellow, Nick. Now, did you ever get back to India? I managed to get a flight to India, yes. People were holding oxygen cylinders, painkillers, medical supplies. It was a hysteria. We focused on helping the most disadvantaged people who lived in impoverished areas like slums, and most of the pharmacies were robbed in panic. So my friend's NGO was able to donate a lot of medical supplies to these pharmacies. My daughter and my wife were scared that I was there. There was no vaccinations at that time, but I was careful. And here you are, doing well. 
Yes, I have a wonderful family class. Um, my job as a senior manager at Amazon and my family is kind of a back to normal. I'm truly grateful to be where I am. I work in skilled nursing, rehabilitation, and convalescent care. And I always believed that I was destined to work in this industry. After my parents immigrated here from India, they got their CNA licenses. They worked alternate schedules at a nearby facility. My mom's baby shower that was held for me was actually held in what is now my competitor's dining room. I would uh, visit my parents at work. My mom's patients would knit me things, send treats through her. And as I got older, I realized the scents, the environment, none of it bothered me. And I really, really enjoyed seeing the patients. It has to be hard managing a place that cares for declining patients, you know, and along came COVID, which was like a thief to so many families. Well, I started here in 2019, and eight months into the job, I had to figure out a way to communicate COVID protocols and regulations to my team, and more importantly, the families. The visitation was restricted. It was like a curtain coming down. So I decided to try using a mass texting platform. And while it was industrious, I realized it was way too public and I really did not want to be the administrator on the news. So I took a step back and I decided to communicate the way the families wanted, an old fashioned phone call from my team members and me to each one of them. It's the human touch. So your whole tenure here at Chatsworth has pretty much been during the pandemic? Yes, and it was very difficult. Everyone would come to me with their questions, but that's where Coach Wooden's way makes sense. It really truly is about the spirit of teamwork. And I would get information to my managers and rely on their individual expertises to come back with their own ideas. But at the same time, I tried to really instill humility in the team to admit what was working and to call out what was not, even if it was my own idea. And I am so proud of this team that they've stuck together, especially when nursing attrition has been so high. That's the humble servant leader model, and I can tell you that it works. So Sonia, I have to ask, how do you deal with a facility that has to be designed for the end of people's lives, so to speak? Early on when I was just a volunteer, it was really hard to deal with the emotions that come with death. I used to help out at a facility and there was a resident who was a journalist. She really wanted to write newsletters at the facility, but she had rheumatoid arthritis. So I would go in and I would write for her. One day I had called ahead just to check in and let her know that I was coming, but she didn't answer. So I went into the facility, but her bed was empty. And the staff had told me that I had made a really big difference in her life. And I have to remember that these residents had very robust lives before they came to us. And it's not just about these last two months or even two years that you got to know them. And you really truly have to honor and respect that. Sonia, that is why we honor and respect you. You're an incredible person. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of getting to know you.